Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the new analysis and a new suggestion for how many different Earth-like planets might exist out there in our own galaxy. And this new analysis has so far been the most detailed and also the most thorough to date. So let's talk a little bit more about this and what the scientists have discovered, and let's talk about the implications of this new research. But also start with the few limitations that we currently have in our knowledge and our understanding of the galaxy. First of all, when it comes to approximating the number of stars, we are not even that certain how many stars our own galaxy has. The smallest uh, estimate is at around 100 billion stars, with the largest estimate being about 400 billion. So it's somewhere in between 100 and 400. And it's actually somewhat difficult for us to count all of them, mostly because, first of all, we're actually looking at everything from within the galaxy itself, so it's a little bit difficult to see the whole galaxy that way. But at the same time, the only thing we can do is possibly try to estimate the number by looking at other galaxies like the Andromeda and thus estimate the number of stars in our own galaxy. But that's not a very accurate method. So in that sense, we still have a lot to go in our ability to understand how much of stuff there is even in our own galaxy. We do, however, have a relatively accurate representation of a smaller sample of stars near us with a number of planets we've already discovered there. And most of this comes from the now defunct, although very successful telescope known as Kepler that was operating for many, many years and to date discovered several thousand planets. The total number of planets we've confirmed so far stands at 4,296 as of November of 2020. But as you can imagine, this number is going to grow bigger and bigger as telescopes like TESS and other telescopes discover new planets. But when it comes to counting stars and looking at nearby stars, a much more accurate sample comes from the beautiful Gaia telescope that has been creating a three-dimensional map of the space around us and discovering all sorts of stars and calculating their precise measurements, allowing us to create a really accurate sample of nearby space. And so the scientists behind the paper you can find in the description below combine the data from Gaia telescope with the data from Kepler telescope to create a relatively accurate estimate for how many possible habitable planets we'll be able to discover if we were to look at the entire galaxy. Now obviously this is using statistical analysis and this is using somewhat similar ideas that other scientists have used in the past, but the only difference here is that they used a much larger sample and they also used the data from Gaia telescope which provides an extremely accurate measurement of stars. But the main difference between this study and some of the other previous studies that tried to create these estimates is essentially in the type of stars they looked at. Because of such a huge variety of stars out there, there's only a certain type of stars we know for a fact can have life. The star like our own, the G-type star. Whereas, for example, much larger, much more massive O-type or B-type stars or even A-type, today we believe are either way too massive and produce too much X-ray and a lot of other dangerous radiation, or simply don't live long enough because a lot of them usually go supernova after only a few million years to give any planet a chance to develop any habitable conditions on the surface. Then on the opposite spectrum we have objects like T-type and L-type which are known as brown dwarfs and they simply don't provide enough energy for anything and usually also contain a lot of dangerous radiation as well. Although these objects are also a lot more mysterious and more difficult to find so we just don't really know enough about them. Then we have the ubiquitous and very very populous M-type stars, also known as red dwarf stars, and these are pretty much everywhere around us. As a matter of fact, the closest such star is Proxima Centauri, with the object in the habitable zone known as Proxima b, which seems to be also Earth-like. And so in that sense, red dwarf stars are very interesting because they do have a high chance to potentially have terrestrial plants around them. But unfortunately, every study so far established that red dwarfs are also extremely unpredictable in terms of very powerful flares. The super dangerous solar flares around these objects seem to be way, way more powerful than anything our sun can produce and also have a chance to completely strip a planet of atmosphere and any potential ability to hold liquid water, thus essentially turning any habitable planet completely uninhabited or unable to sustain life. But the last three types, the K-type, the G-type and the F-type stars, do have a very high chance of being stable enough and also having long enough lives for habitable planets to form around them. With the K-type stars being particularly interesting to us because they are a little bit more abundant than the G-type and they also tend to live much longer than the G-type stars as well. 
In other words, by identifying K, F, and G type stars, and also by trying to identify the number of potential planets around them, we can generally then estimate the total number of these habitable planets in the entire galaxy. And many of the previous papers that tried to estimate this usually use the total distance of the planet to the star to try to identify if it's habitable or not, but in this paper, the scientists focused on two major parameters. First one was the total amount of radiation or total amount of heat the planet receives, depending on the total temperature of the star itself. And the second was the total radius of the planet, making sure that the planet was not too small or too large in size. And here they specifically focused on stars that were just a little bit cooler and a little bit hotter than the sun, with the smallest temperature being about 4800 degrees Kelvin and the largest temperature being about 6300 degrees Kelvin, with the sun obviously in the middle. And in terms of the planetary radius in comparison to planet Earth in the middle, the largest planets they've taken a look at were about double the radius of planet Earth and the smallest were only about half the radius. Meaning that for their study they made an assumption that to be a habitable planet, the planet can only be only a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller than Earth. And as you can probably imagine, not that many planets were found in the Kepler uh, database that fit all of these criteria perfectly. But since only several thousand planets from about 3000 different star systems were used in this analysis, and since we're trying to use this small sample to extrapolate this to a much larger billions of star representative in our galaxy, the end result suggested that there could be about 300 million habitable planets in our galaxy. What's more exciting is that according to them, the nearest such planet should be within about 20 light years away from us. And that means that of all of these 100 or so nearest stars to us, within about 20 light years, there's at least one more habitable planet somewhere out there. At least habitable in the sense that it's about the same size as Earth, and it's about the same distance away from its star that's very similar to our own Sun. It obviously could be more similar to Venus, for example, and have tremendously hot conditions on the surface, or more similar to Mars and have nothing on the surface. So calling it habitable in this case is still a little bit of a misnomer. Nevertheless, the analysis is pretty rigorous and the suggestion is still there. And if we were to move a little bit farther away at a distance of about 33 light years away, we might find up to about 4 of these planets. In other words, these are not as uncommon as they seem, with the total number in the galaxy being around 300 million. And that's of course around stars similar to G, K or F type, and planets relatively similar in size to Earth. And another major statistical implication here is that, well, it seems that many F, K, and G type stars, or in other words, stars similar to our Sun, at least from the stars that Gaia Telescope and Kepler Telescope looked at, seem to possess at least one Earth-sized planet within the region we would call habitable zone. And so according to the scientists in this paper, roughly around 37 to maybe 50% of all of the stars similar to our Sun possess at least one of these terrestrial planets in just the right region of space where liquid water could potentially exist. And although in the past scientists have discovered that red dwarfs, for example, do seem to contain terrestrial planets in a habitable zone as well, today we know that red dwarfs are most likely just not really that good at maintaining habitable conditions for a long time because of their flares. G, K and F type stars, on the other hand, seem to be almost perfect because we know that our star, the G type, has mild enough conditions for planets like Earth to survive for billions of years. And so in that sense, this kind of an analysis is extremely important in helping us understand how many potential habitable worlds there could be out there, and most importantly, how far away the nearest one might be to us. And in this case, it seems that it could be within about 20 light years away, which when it comes to space distances is almost nothing. But chances are, with new telescopes and also with data from the TESS telescope, we might have even more data from other stars and other planets that we discover that might actually challenge this result in the next few years, especially if we discover more planets around F, G, and K type stars, which might increase this number even more dramatically, suggesting that these worlds are even more common than we thought. Which is, I guess, in some sense, great news for, well, the future of humanity if we ever manage to leave our planet but also possibly for our ability to discover someone else out there. If there are a lot of habitable planets out there, and if we know where they're located approximately, it will give us much easier time to discover some kind of an extraterrestrial species somewhere out there. 
But I guess until future studies or until we discover more, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the Wonderful Person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.